My name is Dr. Alfred Miller. The purpose of this video is to consider an alternative cause for neurodegenerative diseases. A specific cause that can be documented with proper testing. I practiced internal medicine and rheumatology in San Antonio for 40 years. I'm a retired Mayo Clinic trained physician. In addition, I was on the clinical faculty at the University of Texas Health Science Center with the academic designation of full professor. My interest in neurodegenerative diseases intensified in 2008 when my daughter-in-law, age 43, living in Boston, was diagnosed with ALS. She was seen by three very prestigious academic institutions and all came to the same conclusion. All three academic institutions informed us that the MRI of her brain was compatible with multiple sclerosis. However, her physical examination revealed ALS, also known as amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or Lou Gehrig's disease. I went to the li medical literature to determine, is there an illness that could present with the MRI of the brain of multiple sclerosis and a physical examination of ALS? And the only illness I could determine that fit that description was neuroborreliosis, also known as Lyme disease, and of course, she lived in the Boston area, which is highly endemic for Lyme disease. I asked each academic institution, did you test my daughter-in-law for Lyme disease? All three said yes. They used the ELISA test and her, studies, her study was negative. One institution included a Western blot and they said that the Western blot was negative. I went to the, again to the medical literature and found that the ELISA test may produce 50% false negatives. In other words, a patient may actually have Lyme disease and the screening ELISA test be negative and the patient will be told they do not have Lyme disease, the disease will be excluded. The one institution that used, that, that included the Western blot, when I looked at the Western blot test, it omitted bands 31 and 34. Now keep in mind, there are many different spirochetes that cause infections. And on the outside of the spirochetes are protein bands. The protein bands that are very specific for the Lyme organism are bands 31 and 34. These proteins are so specific for the Lyme organism that they were included in the Lyme vaccine that was available in the United States from 1998 to 2000. And yet, in this country, most laboratories omit bands 31 and 34. To omit those two bands, I feel, makes the Western blot test invalid. I sent my daughter-in-law's blood to a lab that included 31 and 34, and she was positive for Lyme disease. Lyme disease is a bacterial infection caused by a spirochete known as Borrelia burgdorferi. The manifestations of the infection depend upon which part of the body is invaded, which system. The symptoms may be mental or physical. If the organism invades the musculoskeletal system, the patient may develop arthritis, they may develop a transverse myelitis, they may develop a picture compatible with a lumbar, a lumbar disc herniation. If the organism invades the cardiovascular system, the patient may develop heart block. If it invades the blood vessels, vasculitis, with the potential of a stroke. If it invades the nervous system, 
Depending upon which part of the nervous system is predominantly involved, a picture of multiple sclerosis or ALS or dementia or Parkinson's may appear. If it invades the brain, various mental illnesses have been described and the medical literature cites numerous studies where Lyme disease has simulated schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, depression, and rage. Therefore, Lyme disease becomes the great imitator. Because my daughter-in-law's illness was excluded, the Lyme disease was excluded by invalid testing, it is extremely important that proper testing be performed. Since my experience with my daughter-in-law, I have encountered numerous patients with MS, ALS, dementia, all of whom are positive when properly tested. The next video will deal with proper testing and chronic Lyme disease.